I learned rendering for architects in 24 hours. This is the software I used, and this is how long I have used it for. I've been claiming for two years that learning rendering for architects is easy and fast. And in order to prove my point, I had to make some simple rules. Rule number one, I cannot follow a structure program or a course. And trial and error would have to be mostly my method of learning. Rule number two, the total time that I can spend learning with this new software is 24 hours and it would all have to be documented in my YouTube live streams. Rule number three, in order to win this challenge, my Instagram community of architects shouldn't be able to tell the reference image from my render. I'll put both the render and the reference image in a poll. And if they guessed which one is my render, I would no longer be a credible source for architects to learn render. So my reputation was really on the line here. However, this was my plan to save my reputation. Step one, find 3D model. Step two, export a DeFi render. Step three, create a render. I mean, pretty simple, but I had to repeat this process until I can only create realistic renders and I only had a total of 24 hours. Without wasting time, I imported a 3D model, which was a simple contemporary home, opened in D5 and started going through everything. And jumping to a brand new software was really confusing. It is a very special day because I'm finally not using Enscape in a live stream. So the navigation through the model was very different. There was a brand new user interface to learn there were different default settings and honestly, having completely different assets in the library didn't help either. But I remember that no matter what software I use, I will always follow the same five step process in this same exact order. Step one, three modeling. Step two, composition. Step three, lighting. Step four, materials and then visual settings. Even though I followed those steps very closely, the final render from that session was absolutely and completely awful. At first, it worried me because once again, my credibility was on the line here. However, I kept going and posted the results even though they were terrible. Because the truth is, any one of you who is in this journey will get awful looking renders in the beginning. With 19 hours left, I chose a simple scene. A scene that I thought would be easily successful because it was smaller scale and a scene similar to something I did in Enscape previously. In this scene, I went for a 4 by 5 aspect ratio and my idea behind this was that the less pixels there are, the less elements to worry about in the rendering. By the way, in case you want a guideline on what kind of aspect ratio to use, here's what I suggest. Use 4x5 or 1080 by 3050 pixels if you will use it as a social media post. Use 9x16 or 1080 by 1920 pixels if you will use it as shorts. Or use 16x9 if you will use it as a presentation or a widescreen monitor. However, even though I did try my best to make the most out of the shredder, the final result was disappointing. It was my second attempt trying to create a realistic kernel with D5, but it just ended up looking like Minecraft. I mean, even AI couldn't help me. It still looked awful. At this point, I knew that I couldn't expect a great looking render right from the get go, but at least I wanted to see some progress, which I was not seeing at all. With 14 hours left, I went for my third attempt. I thought to myself, well, I tried two cheer, so let me try an interior. So I downloaded an office scene, imported in D5, and got right back to basics. I mean, I always use the same lighting technique in interiors, no matter what scene I'm using, which is called the fake lighting. This is where I completely turn off the sun intensity and put a rectangular light in the interior directly to the window openings. In this case, it worked wonders for me, but after that, I tweaked some more of the materials and put more artificial lighting to make the area appear a bit warmer. This scene also had a four x five aspect ratio, and by the end of it, I was honestly pretty happy with the result. I even put it through an AI enhancer, and this time it really put the render to a whole nother level, even though some materials were detected as curtains instead of solid rocks. But anyway, this one really raised my hopes high that I was going to pass this challenge. So that was a win. Time was running out quickly, and now I only had 11 hours left. While moving out to my fourth project and render, I felt like I knew most of the options that D5 offers, and I was ready to tackle yet another exterior. This time, I was going back to widescreen aspect ratio. I tackled this workflow just like the other ones. However, there were two features that I explored and they sounded super helpful. The first one was a preset library where with just one click, I could apply certain effects and moves to the whole scene. This was so good for beginners and it really just fastened the learning curve to a whole new level. The second one, is also great if you don't want to limit yourself to the preset library. You can basically just download any reference image online and upload it in D5 
and it will match the whole scene to that mood with just one click using AI. I mean, this is so cool and it really automates so much of the guessing process in the effects tab. And the daytime render of this project came out looking okay, but I also gave nighttime rendering a try while in the same project and I think it came out looking pretty good. So not bad so far. However, at this point, I had only seven hours left to complete the challenge. And the renders were getting better, but they were in no way close to a level where someone cannot tell whether it is a real life photo or a render. At this point, I had a better chance at winning the challenge by going for an interior render. However, I refused to play it safe and still went for an exterior project in my fifth render. With seven hours left, I went for a pretty common look of a house. Wide screen aspect ratio and just got straight to what gave most impact in my last render. I uploaded a reference image in the AI atmospheric match and it automatically gave the sky a look that I was going for. It was almost kind of like a dusk setting with a darker sky and warm interior lighting to make up for the contrast in the whole image. During this workflow, I also found another very useful feature which is called Parallax and is located inside the assets library. Right here, you could put an image in the interiors and it would make it look like it was already furnished and populated with objects. It basically just gave more overall context to the render and it made it look a lot more livable. In this render, I also played around with the scatter tool more than anything else. And let me tell you that the scatter tool in D5 is just on a whole nother level compared to all of the rendering tools that I've tried. Not only the brush tool or the options that the scatter tool has in general, but also the quality of the vegetation is just so good and in my opinion is just unmatched. While finishing this render, I was honestly very happy with how it came up since it still wasn't convincing enough. And as of now, I was a hit or miss when it came to creating renders with this new software and I had two hours left in total for the next render. So I really had to go through with this. Two hours left on the clock and now I couldn't afford to miss my shot. This was my final render for the challenge, but in this project, I couldn't waste time doing too much experimentation. I went for a 16 by nine aspect ratio, used the AI atmosphere match, added the materials, added the vegetation with scatter. However, even though I went for that, I knew I didn't want to experiment very much, but I found a very useful model in the asset library where I could place a mountain in the background and hide the horizon line completely. And with all of those done, there was one final step where I would have the render enhanced by the new built-in AI that D5 has. And this time, AI could help me since I gave it at least a decent initial output. I really thought we came close and was hoping that I would win this challenge. But with that said, I posted the poll. Okay, so the results are in and we actually passed the test. To be fair, I recognized before posting that the other image was also rendered and a photographed image. However, I just couldn't find in any way a photographed image of that same exact building. However, what is important to say here is now that I have gone through the whole process and went through my own trial and error, it doesn't mean that you have to do the same. I have created a free course for you with all the tips that architects need to create realistic renders in D5. So you get to cheat and use my shortcut, save tens of hours and headache dealing with technical difficulties. And instead of dealing with all that, you can learn writing for architects with D5 render for free by watching the video right here.